Hello everyone, my name is David Diaz. I am the herpetarium coordinator here at the Barrier Island Environmental Education Center. And we're about to take a look at our herpetarium where we keep all our reptiles and amphibians. So come on. Our first group of animals are the amphibians, and here we have two representatives. So we have a southern toad and a salamander. Now, amphibians are quite different than reptiles. They have very moist skin that allows them to even breathe through that skin, uh, but they requ it requires them to be in water for most of the time. Uh, and they also lay their eggs in water. These eggs don't have any shells. If you look at the amphibians closely, maybe their toads, you'll notice that they don't have any claws. There you are. Now this is a southern toad, which is a species of toad that's very common around this area. And they're quite different than frogs. If you look at their skin, it looks a lot drier, bumpier. While the skin on a frog is gonna look almost very wet and moist. Now this is a pretty cool animal that Haley has. She has a salamander, specifically a spotted salamander. And you may confuse this animal with a lizard. But salamanders are related to frogs and toads, and they hatch from eggs inside the water and are tadpoles when they're young, just like frogs and toads are. They go through a process called metamorphosis, which changes until they become an adult. They're pretty cool animals. Hi guys, my name is Alyssa, and today I'm going to be showing you guys a corn snake. Now the corn snake is called the corn snake because he was originally found in cornfields eating mice, rats, and other rodents. This is a non-venomous snake and I'll tell you a couple of the ways you can tell. The first thing that you can do is look at the pupils of the snake and you'll notice that the pupil is round and perfectly circular. Venomous snakes are going to have more of a diamond or football shaped pupil. You can also look at the shape of the snake's head and you'll see that the corn snake has a head that's about the same width of the rest of the body, while venomous snakes will have more of a triangular shaped head with puffy cheeks. The last thing that you can do is look at the shape of the body. Our non-venomous snake has a long thin body to be able to constrict its prey, whereas venomous snakes are going to have shorter thick bodies because all they need to do is bite to kill their prey. Let's look now at our more armored animals, the turtles. Hi everyone, my name is Liz, and today I have our Eastern Box Turtle. Now our Eastern Box Turtles are very, very cool animals, just turtles in general, because they have what is called a carapace and a plastron covering their body. Now you may be wondering what a carapace is and what a plastron is. Carapace is basically their back shell right here, and their plastron is their belly shell that covers their entire body and protects them. Now, this turtle right here is one of the only turtles that we can think of that can go completely inside of its shell with a door-like hinge right here on its plastron. It's able to close up just like a box. Now, you can tell that this guy is a land turtle for a couple of reasons. From its carapace coloration, it would be living in the woods, and also from its really dry and scaly skin, as you can see right here, on its arms and on its head. These guys are also known as omnivores, so they eat plants and a little bit of meat. Now these guys primarily love to eat salads and they also love a good worm and a nice cricket as well. And that's our Eastern Fox Turtle. Now for the moment some of you have been waiting for, gators. 
Hi guys, my name is Haley and today I have for you an American alligator. But what often gets confused with alligators? Crocodiles. So while these animals look very similar, there are some differences that can help us tell the difference between them. The first difference is between their head shape. So for alligators, they have a more rounded head shape as it leads to its snout, while crocodiles have a more narrow or pointed head shape as it leads to its snout. Another difference is between their teeth. For alligators, their teeth fit a lot more nicely into their mouth, but crocodiles, I like to say they could use a pair of braces. They're a little bit more snaggletooth and don't fit as nicely. Um, while we have um, both of these animals in the world, in this part of the world, we would only find the alligator. Now that we got to see all of the animals in our herbitarium, it's time to go outside and see what we can find. Let's go! Here in the forest, you can find all sorts of reptiles and amphibians. Since we live in an island surrounded by salt water, it is very important to have places like this slough here so that amphibians and reptiles can come for drink. this way. Right over on that log we have a yellow bellied slider. And at this time of the day, most turtles you'll see them basking in the sun just like that one. Now being ectothermic, they do need to heat up with the sun's rays in order to get the energy they need throughout the day. So it's not uh, uncommon to see a turtle do this. Now even though it's a little bit hot for other reptiles and amphibians to be out during this time, the turtles are really enjoying it. That one's a female. I do know this because she is a lot larger than a male would be. Females can get to be larger than males. So we have another reptile out here enjoying the sunshine. We have an American alligator out here in the duckweed. And it's almost impossible to tell if you're not sure what you're looking for because from far away, it just looks like a moss colored log. Now this is probably a six to seven foot alligator and the way that you can tell is by gauging the distance between the eyes and the nostrils in inches. So if you have a distance of six to seven inches from the eyes to the nostrils, then you're probably looking at about a six to seven foot alligator. Another good place that you could look for reptiles and amphibians would be underneath logs. So what you wanna do if you find a log that you wanna flip over to see who's underneath, you wanna make sure that you touch the log and you pull it towards yourself. You don't flip it away from yourself because if there is an animal underneath, you wanna make sure that the log is in between you and the animal. So we're gonna pull this one up and see if there's anything to see. Sometimes you find stuff, Sometimes you don't, and that's okay. Ooh, a spider and some fungus and a roly poly. Hmm. Even if they're not here, that means that their food is here. 